Hi, this is Jeff. It's important that I point out here at the beginning that the objective of this video is solely to describe the methodology of aging deer by toothwear. This is not intended to explore the positive or the negative aspects of the method. I have posted another video that focuses solely on the history, interpretations, applications, and limitations of the toothwear method. And I provided a link to it here below in the description of this video. So if you have questions or need clarification of any parts of the methodology, please feel free to do so here in these comments. I will respond to as many as I can. However, if you feel the need to comment on the application of the method as it relates to deer management, please hold those comments until you've seen the other video. That will be the place where we can have a free discussion on management implications. And I would encourage you to first watch this video and ensure that you have a full grasp of the method. Okay, let's talk about how to age a deer by tooth wear. So in the back of the jaw, and we're not talking about the incisors, okay? Our aging is gonna be done with the teeth at the back of the jaw. So they have six teeth. The first three teeth are premolars, tooth one, two, and three. And the other three teeth are molars, tooth number four, number five, and number six, okay? Now, it can be confusing because quite frankly, this looks like two different teeth, but it's not. This is one tooth, but it has two cusps, okay? And that's what we call these little guys right here, are cusps. Tooth five has two cusps, and tooth six has three cusps, those two guys, and then that little guy way back there in the back, okay? All right, the other thing that we need to know is that we're looking at the crests, and the crests are just these little pointy tips, which aren't always pointy, depending upon how old the deer is. But we're looking at the crest, what, if you may hear the term lingual crests, and all that means, that's just a fancy scientific way of saying the crest on the tongue side of the jaw, right? So. Back over in here is the tongue side. Over here is the cheek side. We're not gonna be looking at the cheek side. We'll be looking at the tongue side or the lingual crests, okay? So the pointy guys are the crests. Well, the crests, down in the little crease of these is a dark material. See that little line in there where it's real dark? That's called dentine, okay? And it gets a little wider here. Uh, on this age of deer, and that's what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be comparing the width of the dentine and comparing it to the white material, the enamel, that surrounds it. And so the question we're going to be asking ourselves is, is the dentine as wide or wider than the white material that surrounds it? Okay, and so that would be looking at the width from here to here of the dentine and comparing it to the width of the enamel. All right, so the other thing that we need to talk about, terminology, and I'm gonna call this the center ridge, okay? The fancy scientific word is infundibulum. That's kind of a mouthful. So let's just stick with center ridge. And I'm talking about this little crease and kind of pointy tips that go right down the middle of all these teeth, okay? We're gonna call that the center ridge. Okay, we're gonna start with the fawn here. When they're babies, they have baby teeth. The th front three teeth, the premolars, these are actually baby teeth. And the important thing is, is to note that this third premolar has three cusps, right? It's got one, two, and three. And in a fawn, they're nice and sharp, okay? Now, <clears throat> the other important thing that I wanted you to see is how, <clears throat> This first molar, tooth number four, they have when they're a little baby. It's the oldest tooth in the mouth, okay? And that's a very important thing to remember because we're gonna, it appears that deer teeth wear from the front to the back. But what they actually, which I guess they do, <clears throat> but what's actually happening is this tooth is a year older than this tooth. And there's another one that's gonna come in way back there when they turn two years old and they're gonna get their final sixth molar. And so that's why they appear to wear from the front to the back, but what it really is is that's just the oldest tooth in the deer's head because he's gonna shed these baby teeth and permanent teeth are gonna come up underneath him, okay? 
<clears throat> okay, here's a one year, a one and a half, uh, which by the way, the whole half thing, don't be confused by the one and a half, two and a half. All that is doing is just acknowledging that the deer are born in the spring and summer and you're shooting them in the fall. Okay, so don't get hung up on that. Um, <clears throat> so on a one and a half year old, what we see is that they still have their baby teeth. Premolar one, two, and three. And you'll remember on the fawn had one, two, three cusps, correct? So we know it still has its baby teeth, but what we notice is look how wore out they are, right? We would even call that dished out. So let's compare that to the fawn real quick. So we see premolar one, two, and three with the one, two, three cusps, one, two, three cusps. So he still has his baby teeth, but they're wore out. And we look back here, where here's that molar, the first molar, number four, and there's number five, but look, number six is still tucked away back there, okay? <clears throat> so that's a one and a half year old. There's no reason to ever miss a one and a half year old. Okay, now a two and a half year old. Now look what we got here. We have a permanent tooth, a permanent tooth, and a permanent tooth. And what we see on the third premolar that is a permanent tooth, we see that it has two cusps, a bigger one and then one that's a little bit smaller, right? Earlier on the one and a half year old, if I can find it, here he is, that three cusp one, two, three has been replaced, let me even them up there, has been replaced with a tooth that has one big cusp and one little cusp. And these are all now permanent teeth, okay? So, let's talk about how our criteria goes, all right? So we look in the mouth, we look in the deer's mouth, and the first thing we see is we're going to start on that third tooth, okay, the third premolar. So we're going to look back there, we're going to go, there's tooth one, tooth two, there's tooth number three, and what I see is a tooth that has one big cusp and a little cusp. So I know, as a process of elimination, that the deer is at least two years old, two and a half, okay? All right, so now I start working my way back, and this is going, we're going to go through some criteria, and if it qualifies, we keep going, and if it doesn't, we stop, right? So we know that there's at least two and a half. So now we're gonna go back here to this molar. And so what we're looking at is, we're looking at these dark lines on the tongue side crests. And we're gonna compare them to the width of the white enamel that surrounds it, okay? And so <clears throat> in order for the deer to qualify for three-year-old category is that dentine needs to be as wide or wider than the enamel that surrounds it, okay? And that's why a lot of times when guys send pictures, they'll say, hey, how old is this deer? And they'll send you a picture like that. I'm like, I have no clue, because you're not showing me what I need to see. And so we wanna look straight down on it as much as we can so that we can compare the width of the dentine to the enamel. And what we would say on this tooth I would say, now here comes a little bit of the judgment call. It's a little, a little bit of subjectivity, but it's not gonna matter and it'll come clear in a little bit why. But the only subjective part of the tooth wear method is whether someone believes that thin line is as wide or wider than the white stuff that surrounds it, okay? Now, if you flipped it over this way and you said, well, are they sharpened? They're worn. How worn are they? Well, they don't look very worn, but there's nothing to compare it to. And so that leaves that subjective. And we're trying to be objective. In fact, the guys that developed this method worked real hard trying to find an objective way to do it. And what makes it objective is, you know, we could, we could get out a micrometer and measure that and then measure this. But as we go through this, you'll, it'll become obvious um, why that's not necessary, especially if you'll go watch my other video where we talk about um, the usefulness of tooth wear. We'll get really in depth on that, okay? And so, but what you'll notice is there's no reason to be getting all goofy and trying to measure stuff, okay? So, I'm going to stop 
and say that the deer is two years old because I don't believe that dentine is as wide or wider than the enamel that surrounds it. And so we're done. So it's a two year old deer. Okay, so now we're gonna do a three year old. And note, I swapped sides of the jaw on you. This is the other side of the jaw and this side are, are the tongue side crests. This is the cheek side, okay? But, doesn't matter. What we do, we look in there, we go to the first tooth, which, sorry, that's missing. There's the second, the third, and I see a big cusp and a little cusp, which tells me the deer's at least two years old. So now I proceed to the next tooth and I compare the dentine width to the enamel that surrounds it. And what I would say is that this dentine is at least as wide as the enamel that surrounds it. And so now it qualifies for a three-year-old deer. So now I just keep going back, go back to the tooth number five, and I look at that dentine, but look how thin that line is. That's nowhere near as wide as the enamel that surrounds it. See how much wider this dentine is than this one? So that means the deer does not qualify for four years old, so we stop and then we call it the deer three and a half years old. Okay, four year old. So what we see is we start here on the first tooth, second tooth, third tooth. We see a big cusp and a little cusp so that we know it's at least a two year old. Now we're gonna go back here and we're gonna look at the width. I'm gonna say that the width of the dentine is as wide or wider than the enamel. So I'm gonna go to the next tooth. So he's at least three years old. Then we go to the next tooth. And again, I'm gonna say that the dentine is as wide as the enamel. So he's a four year old. Now I go back here and just skinny little lines of dentine. So I stop at four. Okay, and now, looking at a five-year-old, so we see it's broke, but there was a tooth there. That's one, two, three, big cusp, little cusp, and note how it's beginning to wear. So we go to the molar, obviously dentine wider than enamel. Next tooth, obviously dentine wider than enamel, and we go all the way to the back, and also, again, finally on the rear tooth, tooth number six, the dentine is as wide or wider than the enamel. So, we're all at the back of the head. What do we do? Well, that's a five-year-old. How do we know he's not a six-year-old? Because we ran out of criteria, right? Well, once you get to the back, and the dentine is as wide as the enamel, we come back to the molar again. But what we see is that the center ridge on that first molar is still there. However, when that deer turns six, what we see is we have the dentine as wide as the enamel on tooth six, but what we see on number four is it's completely dished out. The center ridge is completely gone. And it's completely gone, mostly gone. It needs to be mostly gone at least. So that's a six-year-old. That first tooth, if you look in a deer's mouth and that first tooth is wallowed out, that's a six-year-old. I'm swapping sides on you again, sorry. So this is a seven-year-old. So what we've done, we've come back to the front. We see the first molar is dished. And we see that the second molar has a dished cusp and a little bit of center ridge left. So since that one's dished, we would go ahead and call him seven. And the last tooth, the center ridge is all there. So he's a seven-year-old. And then finally, swapping sides again, dished, dished, and dished all the way to the back. So that deer's, officially, we would say that that is an eight and a half year old deer, okay? Now don't get hung up on that because we know that deer live to be more than eight years old. That's not new information. And there's no criteria to age a deer of this age. And from a management standpoint, it doesn't matter. If you want to get very in-depth to the applications and limitations of the method, please check out my other video. I'll go full depth, interviews and everything like that. Go check it out. But first, you got to know how to do it. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you learned a lot.